Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be talking about some romance books for y'all. So Valentine's Day is just around the corner and I never do anything for Valentine's Day except for read more specifically romance books. So I thought I would spread the love for some of my favorite romance books out there at the moment so y'all can partake in reading some romance books on this Valentine's Day. I have made two previous romance reads recommendations videos which I will link down below and those do have a bunch of my favorites of all time but I will not be talking about them in this this video so if you want to know more romance books probably some of my favorites like for example Jane Eyre is not gonna be on this list because I talked about that in the first ever romance recommendations video that I ever made if you want to know more romance reads go check out that video down below and you probably won't see some of the ones I talk about often they're on those other videos that I made in the past if any of y'all out there don't know I am a romance freak. I think my channel is slowly becoming more romance heavy. I started out kind of like 50-50 with the YA and the romance genres. I kind of feel myself changing my tastes because I'm kind of in like a bad relationship with young adult fantasy at the moment because nothing really sparks my interest or everything's too tropey for me. I can't deal with it. So I'm kind of leaning more towards the adult romance genre and I'm really loving it at the moment, so I've been reading a lot recently. So I'm gonna share a bunch of those with you right now. <laughs> First off, I wanna get the series that I'm totally obsessed with, start out with it, because I talked about it in my last video, and that is the Royally series by Emma Chase. This is a three book series, and there is a 35 page novella in e-reader format. I believe it is free. I read these books in January and just became obsessed with them. This series includes Royally Screwed, Royally Matched, and Royally Endowed. So this is a companion series, but unlike like other companion series you have to read these in order each book is about a different couple but what happened in the previous books affects the couple in the next book so you need to know what happens in the previous ones in our first book right here we have our main character Nicholas who is the crowned prince of Wesco Wesco is a made-up country I kind of picture it as Genovia in a sense but he is the crown prince of Wesco he's very used to women throwing themselves at him and falling at his feet but then on a trip to Manhattan he finds a woman who does not fall at his feet for him but instead Instead, she throws a pie in his face. It's just the repercussions of them trying to be together in the limelight of the fame and everything. She's just a normal woman living in Manhattan and he's this royal prince. And then the next book, Royally Matched, is my favorite in the series because this is all about the crown prince Nicholas's brother Henry and he has signed up for Bachelor Royal Edition essentially. So he is the bachelor for a bunch of eligible young ladies hoping to be a princess. And instead of falling for one of the girls at the competition, he ends up falling for one of their sisters that they brought along with him. And I love her so much. Her name's Sarah and um, she's me. So if you wanna know what I'm like in real life, go ahead and read this book. <laughs> and the third book in the series is Royally Endowed. And this is all about our main character's sister from the first book. Um, this is about her and one of the prince's bodyguards coming together. Let me just say, after reading this series, I am thoroughly, thoroughly obsessed with royalty romance books i need more in my life if you know any royalty romance books please leave them down in the comments below because let's just say i am obsessed the next book on this list has occupied quite a big space on my shelf over there and that is radiance by grace draven sorry for the ring light glare this is a very shiny cover i originally read this via audiobook i really enjoyed the audiobook this quickly became one of my favorite books of all time so i had to purchase the physical copy this is a fantasy romance book. This is set in a world where there are two different species of people. There's obviously man, humans, and then there's people called the Kai. And if you can see, this is kind of what they look like. That's obviously human. This is a Kai. They are gray-skinned, yellow-eyed creatures with claws and sharp teeth. But these people don't affiliate themselves with each other, like, at all. They're not at war or anything, but, like, they don't, like, affiliate with each other. Half of the land goes to the Kai, and the other half goes to the humans, and they don't really mix at all. They don't hang out together. Nothing like that. Basically, our woman on the front cover here, her name is Ildiko, and she is the niece to a king, I believe or a very high up there royal person and um she is also an orphan and her uncle basically sends her off to marry someone for a political alliance that person just so happens to be brishin the prince of the kai and there has never been a marriage between a human and a kai before so this is all very uh new to the world and for example a lot of humans have never seen a kai before and a lot of kai have never seen a human before this is like an arranged marriage book where like they grow in a sense they go from friends 
to lovers and it's beautiful to read about. The like fantasy aspect of it was super easy to understand and it was just a beautiful world to read about and I really love this couple. Next is a book that I talked about quite often in 2018 and that is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. This is an adult <laughs> romance book. There's some steaminess in this book. We have our main character Stella who has Asperger's and she likes to work with numbers. That's her job. She kind of creates algorithms. Stella has never been good with guys whatsoever. She doesn't like to date men. Um, she doesn't like to be intimate with men whatsoever. She kind of thinks of it as like a chore. She doesn't like it at all. She wants to be close with someone and be intimate with someone but basically she's just really bad at it. So she decides to hire a male escort named Michael to teach her the ways of dating. I related to Stella in a way that I never thought I would. Her anxiety that she talks about often in this book like made me connect with her so much because I deal with that as well. And this romance was just so, so good, so good. Recommend this read if you're into a good-hearted but also kind of serious romance novel. Next is a book I'm surprised I haven't talked about often on my channel and that is The Edge of Never by J.A. Redmirsky. I thought I talked about this in a previous romance reads recommendations video but I was looking at them and I didn't see it on there um, which is surprising because this is one of my favorite romance books of all time. Basically in this book we have our main character Cameron, 20 year old Cameron, who decides to up and leave her home on a Greyhound bus and on that Greyhound bus she meets our other main character Andrew Parrish and Andrew kind of lives life on the edge. He's exciting, he's enthralling, like he's everything Cameron says that she's not. But he's also very secretive towards her. They're kind of thrust together on this bus and maybe thinking, hey, you seem really nice and cool. We'll just like hang out for a little bit and that'll be that. But it turns out to be way more than what they expected it to. And I love this book so much. I've convinced many of my friends in real life who aren't big readers to read this book and they fell in love with it. I've also listened to this audiobook and I thought the narrator did a great job because it's only a woman speaking and I think she did a great job at the male's perspective as well. I just think this is a five star romance read that everyone should pick up. Okay another book <laughs> that I talk about often on my channel Roomies by Christina Lauren. This is my favorite book of 2018. I'll hurriedly talk about this book since I talk about it often. Basically there is a woman who um, sneaks down to the subway station often in New York City because she likes to sneak glimpses at this street performer and thinks he's gorgeous and very, very talented. Her uncle is a very popular Broadway producer and he's trying to look for a musician in this new musical that he's putting on. So she brings her uncle down to the subway station to meet this musician. Turns out they really want him to play this role, but Calvin, our main character man, has to decline the role because he is in the country illegally. He is from Ireland and his student visa expired years ago, so technically he's not allowed to even be in the country, let alone a musical. So our main character woman, Holland, decides to propose the idea of marrying Calvin so he can stay in the country and they have to live together and pretend to be husband and wife. It's a kind of fake relationship to lovers trope and I loved it so much. Needless to say, favorite book of 2018, so I totally recommend this one. The next book on this list I don't have physically and that is because it is an ebook. I read Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon in 2018. I have not finished the series. I think I've read 12 books out of the series. I don't remember, but I read quite a lot of them last year. Haven't finished yet. I think I just read too many of them where it kind of like fizzled out for me and I didn't want to feel that way about the series. So I decided to stop and wait until I was ready again. So this is a sci-fi romance read. Basically these women are abducted by evil aliens and their spaceship that they're in gets crash landed onto this giant ice planet. And on this ice planet, the only people who live there are people called the Sakui? I think that's how you say their names. They're big blue aliens that have horns and um, they have these things in their chests called Kuis. And whenever they're in the vicinity of their lifelong mate and partner, their Kui will start to hum and indicate to them, hey, this is your life partner. And so a bunch of these earth human women crash on this planet and a bunch of these Sakui men find out that these women are their mates. It goes on from there. Each book is about a different woman and man. I think this is just like good trashy sci-fi fantasy reads. I didn't give any of them like five stars. I didn't think they were five stars, but I do think they're like great romance trashy books that I think that you would have really fun time reading because I did. Next is another favorite from 2018. We have Heart of the Fae by Emma Hamm. This is a fantasy 
romance novel. Emma Ham has come out with quite a lot of fantasy romance books, so if you're into that, go check her out. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, fantasy Beauty and the Beast retelling, and I totally recommend this book if you're into Beauty and the Beast retellings because I love it a lot. <laughs> Next we have a series that I haven't really talked about on this channel before. Um, this series is called the Intertwined Hearts series by Kimmy Flores. The first book being it all started with a lima bean. I know that title is really funny but you get it once you read the book why it's called that. But if you're into like a cutesy contemporary romance series. I don't think it's all that steamy so if you're not into that there you go. There are four books in the series and I want to say I read all four books I believe in 2017 and I was obsessed with them. I wasn't expecting to love this series because I think the first book was a freebie on Amazon and I had to I had to buy the rest because they were so good but it's a companion series so all four books isn't not following the same couple in this book we have our main character Abby who is a kindergarten teacher and her first day teaching she meets one of her students named Madison who brings in her father named Caleb and Madison kind of really wants her teacher and her father to be together um, unfortunately Caleb's wife died I believe giving birth to Madison or in a illness shortly after giving birth to Madison and it's just Caleb learning to love again and Abby trying to be this mother figure towards Madison. I really loved it a lot. I love the rest of the series as well and I think this is just a great contemporary romance series. Next we have an historical fiction romance book. We have The Duchess Steel by Tessa Dare. This is all about a duke who recently got his engagement broken off because his to-be wife didn't want to be his wife anymore because he came back, I believe, from war with a giant scar on his face and she just thought him so repulsive that she never wanted to marry him so he let her go. But he has to find a wife to produce an heir so he tries to look for a wife for him. He believes that no one can truly love him because of the scar on his face but he has to find a wife nonetheless so he can produce an heir. So he's just expecting to find a woman who can just basically give him a son and there you go all done. You don't have to love me. That's it. But then his wishes come true when a woman one day just waltzes into his office wearing a wedding dress. It's their story together. Them like butting heads because they're both pretty persistent and stubborn and I thought this was a great historical romance book so totally worth reading. And number 10 on this list is November 9 by Colleen Hoover. Now this isn't my favorite Colleen Hoover book. My favorite Colleen Hoover book is this one, It Ends With Us, but I already talked about It Ends With Us in a previous Romance Reads recommendations video which is linked down below so if you want to know more about that one go check that video out. But this is an another five star rated romance book from me. In this book we have our main character Fallon who is an aspiring novelist and the day before she's supposed to move across the country she meets our other main character Ben and they really think that they would be great together but Fallon has all these plans set in her life to move across the country and Ben wants to stay put right where he is. So time kind of didn't work well with them. They met each other in the wrong time so their plan is to meet every day on the day that they met November 9 just for fun to see what will happen and they don't have any commitment towards each other whatsoever they just agree to meet with each other once a year so this spans over the course of um a long while a couple years it has the plot twist that every Colleen Hoover book has so I loved it a lot she's like the only person that like I can't really guess the plot twists for. This is my first ever Colleen Hoover read. Now looking back at it I think I could have would have predicted the plot twist because I'm so used to her writing now but when I first read this I was totally shocked so if you want a really gripping romance book totally check this one out. So there you have it. Those are 10 romance reads recommendations for y'all. I really hope you enjoyed this video and enjoy reading these books on Valentine's Day if you want to. Let me know down in the comments below if you enjoyed this video and if you'd like to see another romance read recommendations video from me because I have plenty to talk about. Anyways, thank y'all so much for watching and I will see y'all soon with a new video. Bye!